Hello and welcome to the Commonweal Policy Podcast. I'm Craig DL, I'm the Head of Policy and Research at Commonweal and this week I'm joined once again by Colin Turbot. Uh, Colin is a retired social uh, social worker, he now writes on issues involving social work, especially from a radical standpoint, and he is a member of Commonweal's Care Reform Group. Um, Colin was last on the show in episode 77 discussing his, his paper on reforming social work in Scotland. Hello, Colin. Welcome back. Yeah. Hi, Craig. Nice to see you again. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, first, we'll we'll talk about that that paper, struggling to care, and and your 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 grand ideas to to reform social work in Scotland. How did that paper go down? I, I gather there was a quite a good response from especially well, the social care community. Yeah, we we haven't reformed social work yet, but, <laughs> but I, I do feel that we've uh, our ideas are resonating. Um, they do have a popular appeal amongst, certainly amongst workers uh, on the front line. <clears throat> I don't really like to use warlike language like that, but I haven't yet found a, yeah. a, a substitute for that. But workers actually engaged in practice um, do find these ideas very appealing. I think the problem is how we get there. And there are discussions going on um, around the country now to which we are contributing wherever we can. And there are, uh, there's one local authority in particular who uh, are so interested in, their, in our ideas that they've invited me onto the project board for uh, a change process that they, they are embarking upon where our, our ideas are very much to the fore. Um, so it's all good. We've also had discussions with the leading organizations uh, around social work in Scotland and the, they too have shown some 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 interest. Uh, I, I doubt if that would be publicly acknowledged, but I think we are um, we are engaging and we are having some influence. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I I try to avoid the warlike language myself, but I think of other idioms like working at the coal face. But as we're trying to decarbonize everything, that's not not quite a good one either. <laughs> yeah. So, Colin, you've you've quite recently published your second paper for Commonweal. It came out just a couple of weeks ago at the end of June. Um, let's let's uh, spend a wee while talking about this. This is a, another idea for the structure of the, the national care service that, that Scotland seems to be in the process of now discussing and creating. Um, your big idea for this, uh, a radical idea, but not necessarily a new one, is that this community, this national care service should be built around community hubs. Can you tell us a bit about the history of this idea and what yeah. that actually means? Yeah, absolutely. But un unlike the, the, the previous paper really comes out of ideas that have been around for a while now and which the, the pandemic maybe gives an opportunity to reflect and, and then bring these old old new old new ideas back in this one's slightly different it emerges directly from the pandemic um community hubs uh, were were um were, were uh put into place throughout the country throughout the uk as centers from which supports would be delivered to people that needed them who were isolated in their own homes at the height of lockdown uh, last year now the idea of hubs is an original. The idea of basing things centrally and taking things out from there and using volunteer labour as well as uh, the, the public services located in them, that, that's, there's nothing new about that. But the pandemic illustrated, I think, really, really well how effective that kind of operation can be. That you take workers out of their normal silos, you sit them alongside members of the community, you, you match need with service and the formula works really, really well. So the result of that was that food was delivered to people who needed it, prescriptions were delivered, a whole number of supports were took in place using new means of operation. Now, that's, that's not where we're going with our idea and with our paper. What we're saying is that the concept of community hubs can be built upon and developed on a much, much wider basis. And that, just as um, the pandemic provides an opportunity to build a new kind of society, um, and that we that that's very much what we want. That's what we that our ideas within the Commonweal Social Care Reform Group are based upon. Um, it it the, the hubs comes from that. Now during World War Two, 
um, people were in much the same situation. We, we were, um, the country was in the midst of a catastrophic war where lives were lost in large numbers, much, much bigger, you know, much greater scale than this pandemic and affecting young people and not just the most vulnerable in society. They were affected too, of course. But out of that came the idea that if we want to, to, to win the war, if we want to build a better future, then we need to give people something worth fighting for. For. And so from that notion came a whole number of things, um, a whole number of ideas about democracy and a whole number of ideas about the kind of services that people needed so that the awfulness of the 1930s and the depression and unemployment and endemic poverty, chronic poverty, so all that wasn't repeated. Now those, those discussions led to the Beveridge Report, and led to the National Health Service, but they, they also led to other things. They led to a revolution, for instance, in public housing. Uh, they yeah. also led to ideas around community centers and hubs within communities where people could meet together and do things together, learn together. This is adults as well as children and young people uh, and, and older people. Um, now that these ideas that even then weren't original, the idea of miners, miners welfare clubs, of mechanics institutes, of village halls in rural communities, these have been around for a long time, but were regenerated through government sponsored activity at that time. And what I discovered when I was researching for something else was that within army education, these ideas were put to groups of troops. Um, in 1945, towards the end of the war, because I think soldiers, returning soldiers, were seen as not just being the people who'd won the war, um, who'd, who'd done all the fighting and, uh, and risked their lives, but were also the catalyst to a new future. Mm. And of course, yeah. we, we know that, that uh, an awful lot of them voted Labour in 1945 throughout uh, Churchill and his war cabinet and his, Tory, his Tories and replaced them with a, a, a new generation of Labour politicians committed to um, building a welfare state and community centres were well, maybe not the biggest and most celebrated part of that but were certainly part of it. So these ideas were discussed amongst people and seen as arising from the catastrophe of the war. And I think that's something that we we think we a way a, a way in which we should be looking at the pandemic. Now, now, sadly, um, what we've seen in the last few days is that for Boris Johnson and the Tories, it, it, it seems to be a gallop towards a kind of hesitant business as normal, where we can get back to making as much money as possible and forget all about the pandemic and look back on it as some sort of nasty flu virus. Um, and, you know, with a bit of greenwashing thrown in to, to satisfy um, people who are looking towards COP26 later in the year, um, th that we can um, just, just continue um, treading over one another and making money uh, and exploiting one another. And I think we would hope that, they'll, that, that through people like us and through the kinds of ideas that we're generating, we can get some people at least to stop and think, maybe there are more lessons to be learned from the mm. pandemic than this. Maybe we can um, look towards regenerating some really good old ideas about how communities can be built. Now, now I'm not a community worker, I'm not an expert in community development, but I did talk to some people who are when I pulled this pamphlet together, because for, for me, it's about social work. That's, that's my interest. Yeah. And I think social work, if it's to return to what it should be doing and become, a, again, an important component of community life and rebuilding community life, then it has to leave the kind of marginalised silos that, that are described in the earlier paper that it finds itself in and get back to communities and get back to talking to people about how we can prevent social problems from arising in the first place and certainly from escalating to the point where um, services are all need to be statutory and we need to think about things like removing children from families or locking people up or um, dealing with you know, epidemic drug misuse and, and the, the, the deaths, how we can avoid the deaths that arise from that. We need to look upstream. 
we need to look at preventative services and social work has an absolutely essential part to play in that and hubs could be provide the kind of infrastructure where services can be located not just social work but other important community-based services that people look to and including some commercial enterprises and social enterprises as well where people can come together i, I, yeah. I was reading so yeah, so, sorry, so sorry. let's 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 paint a wee practical picture of that then. Um, yeah. Let's imagine that we have our community and we have our community hub, and I'm someone who needs care. Maybe I need to speak to a social worker. Maybe I need some other aspect of care, and I want to go to my community hub. You know, what would that look like on the inside as I walk through the door? Yeah, well, we've we've brought in the notion that again, Arai has come out of the pandemic of this the of what's called a twenty minute neighbourhood where um, for starters, mo the things that people need, including shops and public services are no more than a 20 minute walk from where they live and that communities should be based around that concept. Now, if a hub, if a community hub is located or community hubs, and we're not talking about one building because in a city that would probably take up a square mile if it included absolutely everything. So you can have different types of hubs offering different kinds of services. Now the, 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 the army pamphlet from 1945 refers to government documents at the time that were suggesting that community centres should serve an area of about 2,000 people. Um, mm. It's not actually not yep. a bad idea. Um, that, you know, the, the things, things like that written then that have been forgotten about can also point the way forward. So we're, we're not talking about um, things that are so big that they lose that personal and friendly touch. We want, we want hubs where people can go and be recognised and recognise the people in them, um, where, which, which is the way public services used to be delivered. Now, people used to talk about going into the local housing officer to pay the rent and they knew the person behind the counter. Yeah. That kind of thing no longer exists, but we want to get back to that because that's the friendliest uh, and most effective way of 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 public of, of serving the public. That's a way that recognises people as individuals rather than just as names and numbers. Yeah, we actually um, talked about a similar model in a, a very recent uh, podcast episode when we were talking about community banking. Again, that idea of relationship banking where you, it's not, not just that you get to speak to someone who knows your circumstances, they know your area as well. They they can they understand that what it, what the what the, the the financial picture of your neighbourhood and your community is, and, and decisions can be made better than simply press button. Computer says yes. Computer says no. Yeah, you've 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 hit on the key word there, Craig, which is relationships. This yep. is this is all about public services that are based on relationships uh, and not on on digital contact and computerized systems and remote remote working yeah so we do have other people talking about um uh, national care service and the, the the care reform group has published a paper they've pub we've published the, the manifesto of what um we think should be included in something called a national care service. And we've also reviewed um, the, one of the Scottish government consultations on um, national care service and judged it against that manifesto. Um, so we do have an idea of what other people are starting to think about in, in terms of a national care service. If we don't get communi a community hub model and we get one of these other models, what does that then look like in terms of a national care service and what is missing from it? Yeah, well, well, I, th I think for starters, it's not a national care service. It's actually just a method of delivering uh, uh, one aspect of social care, which, which in the case of the Feely report is about services for uh, adult, vulnerable adults and older people. Now, we've, we've, we are trying within the care reform working group to reconceptualize the whole notion of care and the whole notion of a care service so that what we're talking about is a cradle to grave uh, mm, yeah. operation that doesn't segment things and break them off into artificial um, bodies separate from one another. We want a seamless service just as we have with the NHS. The NHS isn't just for people of a certain age. 
uh, or people with a certain condition. It's for, it's for everybody from pre-birth right through to death. Yeah. And that's, that's what we think, the kind of principle that we think a national care service could be based upon. Now, the, 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 if you start to think about this in terms of community hubs and, and you start to think about what care could really mean, then you can look to models elsewhere to show you how things could be done and that the, the, the target group for Feely could be helped in a completely different way. For instance, in some of the Nordic countries, the services for older people, including residential services for those in, in the most, with the most uh, acute need uh, or chronic need, are sit alongside nurseries for children. And, and why not? Yeah. But in, in the same building, sharing the same facilities so that older people aren't ghettoized into um, into places where all they see is people just like them. But again, feature in, in broader community life. And that that should be the, the kind of one of the founding principles of a national care service, that it should be based on normalizing people's experience. It should be based on supporting people through a journey the journey of life and using relationships as, as the core of that in order to provide people with the support they need to function as normally as possible not just kind of making things efficient and making things cost effective but a whole new way of doing things and there are examples of it operating all over the place what we just want to do is to bring all of this together in one service and of course it would require significant investment yeah. um but 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 we believe the outcome of this would would be beneficial to everybody including the public purse because we would no longer be spending on that kind of far end of of need where people fall off the edge they fall into the river and require rescue from from drowning yeah. That idea of whole of life care, that's something that really popped out at me uh, in this paper. And it does raise a question that uh, I've actually had asked to me when I've been talking about this. Um, I gave that example of, of, of me, someone who needs care, walking into the community hub, what do I see? But how about me as someone who is maybe relatively young, healthy, doesn't need care? Why should I care about this? Mm. Well, I, I think hubs hubs are not just for, for the most vulnerable um, or people who don't consider themselves vulnerable. An example that I've just recently come across is from Newry in Northern Ireland. Uh, and I hope to talk to the people behind this soon. And there, mm. um, some social workers who work in the, in the public sector, they don't work for a third sector organisation, but they were being confronted with young men with mental health problems who were not getting any kind of service at all um, because they were considered, they weren't considered a priority for the acute mental health services. So they were slipping through the net and many of them, we know that the that suicide, um, suicide amongst young men is on the increase. Yeah. And that was something that was being seen in this locality. So what these social workers did was they used, using a community centre, they've opened up a cafe um, where young men like this can go and meet together. And they, they're involved in organising and running the cafe and they help one another and support one another with the issues that, that life throws at them. Now, now that's, that's an example of, of young men, many of them of whom will be working and don't, don't necessarily regard themselves as vulnerable, but who don't feel that great about life at the moment. And goodness me, we've got plenty of reason not to feel very good. And, and unless that's addressed, unless supports are forthcoming, and, and probably these are individuals who don't find that support, uh, as many of us do within our own families or within our own support networks. So this attempts to substitute for that or support it and bolster it. And, but it's based in a center that's there for, for purposes like that. So it doesn't have to be um, about delivering um, the things that we can already see and imagine and just bringing them together. It can be about new developments that need that meet need as it arises. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So um, 
Now, another one of the questions I'm often asked, and this one, again, comes in from various other policies when we talk about trying to do things at a local level. There's always a dilemma in that centralisation versus de decentralisation spectrum. If you centralise too much, you end up with effectively a dictatorship. You could end up with a national care service that is entirely run by the Minister for Health, for instance. Mm -hmm. If you decentralise too much, the, the, the tabloid phrase of choice is postcode lottery, where you get different provision depending on where you live. Does this risk that latter, that, that latter failure? Not, not of investment is made on a on a fair and equitable basis, and I, and I think that's where in the struggling to care document, we we demonstrated how um, the impact of allocation of local government funds, the way that's done, um, me often means that certain types of service suffer in order that other, other kinds of service within a local area can, can remain in place. And that's, that's a function of austerity. That's a function of there not being enough in the first place and people moving money around to try and, and, and you know, rather like the, try, trying to quash the fire uh, where it arises and forgetting or not being overlooking the fact that another fire is, is popping up somewhere else. It's firefighting and, and so that's why I, we, we would emphasize that this does require proper investment yeah. uh, or it won't work. You will finish up with a postcode lottery. And, and we think that community hubs would particularly suit the most disadvantaged areas of the country, um, whether they're rural or urban. But the areas of the country that are most suffering from, from um, lack of jobs, lack of hope, um, lack of infrastructure, lack of services generally. Um, mm. But hubs could be tremendous in generating, uh, generating all these positive things. Yeah, when folk ask me, what does this cost? My, my counter question is often, what is it worth? Uh, and again, this is, a, this is one of these policies that I could see being worth a great deal, not just to communities, but just to general well-being. If we are serious about moving Scotland towards a, this idea of a well-being economy instead of a GDP-driven economy, it, it's this kind of issue that we need to get sorted. Um, so what else, apart from that, needs to happen politically to, 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 to make this all happen and make this be the foundation of a national care service? Yeah, well, th thankfully, I think we're not the only ones thinking about community hubs. It, it's an idea that's coming through the work of other think tank organisations as well, nationally. Um, and I guess all of that puts government under increasing pressure to consider this as a model for bringing communities back together. The, the, our, our government are big on talk about community empowerment. Um, they're not so big on actually delivering that. And in fact, they, they often lead us in the other direction towards the kind of centralization that you were talking about a minute ago, um, removing local power and accountability, proper power and accountability. And the token stuff is always there. Yeah. You know, the committees that have token representation where officials present something else and everybody else like nodding dogs kind of um, nods it through. Uh, what the officials wanted in the first place so what you know what was the point in in that partnership group or whatever you want to call it and that that's not local democracy um, yeah. that's token democracy based on um the token presence of rep of so-called representatives in the community usually people of about my age you know people who've, who've been able to retire and still have a bit of energy left as well as time to do stuff like this now that 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 shouldn't be what democracy is all about. Democracy should be inclusive, it, and it requires a sea change in education and thinking um, amongst the entire population to bring that about. But if, the, if the, the, our ideas about um, community empowerment are bottom-up ones, that they they start from communities and communities thinking for themselves what they need and how things could be shaped to meet the needs that they have. Now that, that can't be delivered from outside. The, the resources need to be delivered from outside yeah. to make it possible. And that's the important thing. And that's what politicians need to put in place and begin to get their heads around. Rather than the ideas being generated from 
organizations outside communities and then kind of handed down to them to get on with um, it, it should be the other way around and that's 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 what local democracy is about for us and, and commonweal have produced other papers on this yes um, indeed um yeah i was actually just about to mention that that we have another paper on a model for local democracy for scotland that mm-hmm. that kind of brings democracy down to the same level the same kind of municipal community level that is completely normal in many countries in in europe and almost all countries in Europe, Scotland and the UK is by far the outlier in terms of our lack of local democracy. Um, even even if, I, I'm not saying that the community hubs wouldn't work in Scotland at present without that democratic change, uh, it, it, it still should be pushed, but I could see it working a lot better if a community hub was run and monitored and overseen by its own municipal council rather than a local authority what well, really should be a regional authority trying to monitor many, many hubs across their entire patch. Yeah, that, that, that's really what makes this a true community hub and not just a building in which services are brought together. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's not what we're talking about. While, whilst the building, the infrastructure has to be put in place and we've made clear in, this, in the community hubs paper that this is about infrastructure. It's not just about... Um, about other kinds of notions of, of bringing people together. It's about providing the resources that people would need in order to do that effectively and the space people would need. It's about space and democratic ownership of that. Yep. Well, Colin, just as we come to the, the end of the podcast, um, just one little final question. What, what's uh, next for you? Uh, what's your next project? And what, what else is the Care Reform Group uh, working on at the moment? Yeah, well, we, we've got lots of ideas. Um, we've got lots of works in progress to bring together our notion of a national care service. And, and whilst we started out um, last year as a response to deaths in care homes through COVID, focusing on the needs of older people and vulnerable adults, and we, we're moving beyond that, as I've described in this broadcast, um, we, we are now looking at the needs of children we're looking at the promise, um, the, 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 the independent care of you for children mm. and what, what that holds, the, what, what that could deliver and how it could be, could be much, much better and more inclusive, we think. Um, we're looking at the provi- provisions for children and families. So, we're di- so it's a work in progress. We're not, a, we're not a large group, but we do have, I think, a, f- a fantastic range of expertise and energy and our, our discussions, our weekly discussions, as you know, Craig, uh, yeah. are amazing because they take us off in all sorts of directions that we hadn't realised we would end up in, but, but generating some wonderful ideas along the way. Um, and I feel you know, very privileged to be a part of that and to be able to help get some of these ideas up and running. The task, of course, is to get them out there. And I think we've been fairly successful with that so far people are listening to us and and we'll continue to talk to anybody about all of this stuff who's prepared to listen to us and engage in those these discussions well folk could take that as an invitation if you would like to speak to colin or anyone else on the care care reform group about um, the idea for community hubs or any of the other national care service ideas that we have produced and are going to produce please do get in touch we would love to speak to you especially if it helps uh, get these ideas uh, off the page and out into the real world so with that thank you everyone for listening again to the podcast thank you colin for coming on again Uh, it's always always good to have guests on it's always good to have repeat guests on uh, if only because we could keep an eye on what you're doing and how successful you've been Um, but just a reminder to all of our listeners that commonweal as an organization is entirely dependent on folk like yourselves who give us five pounds or ten pounds a month we don't have we don't get government funding we don't have big sponsors we don't even have adverts on our website and i should say we have just relaunched our website it's nice and uh shiny new and uh 
looking good, so please go and visit it. We're also now in the process of relaunching our regular newsletters. So if, if you would like to get a weekly newsletter telling you uh, what, what we've been getting up to um, around Scotland, from our policy papers to our local activist groups uh, in your area, uh, and if you would like our monthly updates telling you a bit more about in depth about the policies that we're producing, please sign up to the newsletter and we'll speak to you next week. Thank you.